In this session, we will be discussing about the some basics of exercise physiology. We will be discussing about the second wind also in this session. This session will be especially we will be discussing about the different energy system, a brief idea about the different energy systems of the body. We will be discussing about what is lactate threshold and oxygen deficit and depths. Again, we'll be in the next thing we are going to discuss about uh, here is the air regarding aerobic air and aerobic exercise. What is VO2 max? And which are the different types of skeletal muscles? Which are the characteristic of skeletal muscle? What is conditioning? What is deconditioning? Which uh, and what is what is meant by endurance? And what is second wind? Now, energy systems. There are three types of energy systems are seen at the body. These are ATP PCR system or ATP creatinine phosphate system. Second system is the lactic acid system and third one is the aerobic system. ATP PCR system it is also called immediate system. It is a lactic system, lactate will not be produced and it is also called creatinine phosphate system or phosphogen system. The second system, energy system is the lactic acid system. It is the anaerobic glycolysis system. Here glycolysis occurs, but it is anaerobic glycolysis. And it is also called lactic acid system because end product of this system, end product of this system is that is accumulation of lactic acid. There is accumulation of lactic acid may be seen at this uh, by this, this system. The third one, the, the third system is the NA aerobic system. That is here, there is usage of oxygen. This is called aerobic system. Uh, the, that is called aerobic glycolysis. Now, if an activity which lasting more than, less than 10 seconds, the ATP PCR system or ATP creatine phosphate system will be used. That is, if a very short movements, a very fast and short movement, the system used will be ATP PCR system or ATP creatinine phosphate system for up to a few seconds, even maybe up to 10 seconds. Now, after this activity, after this 10 seconds, next system work is the lactic acid system or anaerobic glycolysis system. End product of this anaerobic glycolysis system is the uh, uh, end product of this anaerobic glycolysis is the lactic acid. So, this system lasts for up to 30 to 40 seconds. So, this is the second system, second system lactic acid system. Now, after this 30 seconds, there is aerobic system occurs. Aerobic system starts its action. That is, after this aer anaerobic systems, the aerobic stress system comes into function and this is called aerobic glycolysis system. The main, the energy ATP production is through aerobic glycolysis. Now, lactate threshold. So, lactic acid, we already discussed, there is a system called a lactic acid system or there is a lactic acid system or a short term system. So, that is the anaero here, the anaerobic glycolysis occurs and there is end product is a lactic acid. So, once you are using the lactic acid and once uh, there is end product is formed called lactic acid and when the lactic, this lactic acid has to be removed from the body or active lactic acid has to be and if the lactic acids are level, uh, it is level of lactic, if the level of lactic acid is higher than body's ability to remove it. So, then it is known that uh, that is known as lactate threshold. Now, so this, there is a coordinate activity of all this system. Now, first of all there will be starting, there will be usage of there is a, there is immediate system or ATP PCR system. Then there is the glycolysis, anaerobic glycolysis system or lactic acid system works and these are anaerobic systems. And after that, after 40 seconds or 30 seconds, so the aerobic system works. Up to the starting of the aerobic system, 
there is conception there won't be any there won't be conception of oxygen so the anaerobic system works oxygen deficit uh, uh, represents the difference between the total oxygen consumed during the exercise an amount that would have been consumed has a steady rate of aerobic metabolism occurs immediately when the exercise begins so this is that this is the uh, oxygen deficit is the amount how much is the anaerobic system it is the how much the anaerobic system worked so it is the difference between if there is a steady rate of oxygen usage or if a steady rate of any aerobic metabolism starts at the uh, at the beginning of the exercise and the difference between the total oxygen actually consumed this difference is known as oxygen deficit there is another term called oxygen debt usually used this is also called uh, ox this is the extra volume this is the additional oxygen that must be taken into the body after a vigorous exercise to restore or to rest uh, restore all the system to their normal state this is called oxygen debt now another term commonly comes is the aerobic exercise aerobic exercise means it refers to the exercise that is moderate with moderate intensity intensity undertaken for a long duration where there is usage of oxygen is there it's this type of exercise is called aerobic exercise the exercise is or will be of moderate intensity and it is for a long duration example is running swimming jogging walking stair climbing etc according to american college of sports medicine any activity uh, aerobic an ex aerobic exercise is they define aerobic exercise as any activity that uses large muscle groups which can be maintained continuously and in a rhythmic nature this these are called aerobic exercise aerobic means use of oxygen so aerobic exercise are the exercise which is done uh, by the usage of oxygen which were the especially the glycolysis the aerobic glycolysis occurs and these are exercise of moderate intensity for a longer duration example running swimming jogging, jogging walking stair climbing etc are considered as aerobic exercise so what are the benefits of aerobic exercise it increases the maximal oxygen consumption it improve the cardiovascular and cardio respiratory functions so aerobic exercise improves cardiovascular and cardio respiratory functions it increases the maximal cardiac output it increases the blood volume and oxygen carrying capacity it it, uh, it decreases the workload of ox, uh, heart for a given sub maximal exercise intensity so it increases the maximal cardiac output it increases the blood volume and decreases the workload of heart it increases the blood supply to the muscles and ability and ability to use the oxygen so blood supply to the muscles will be increased and ability to the use of oxygen by the muscles also increases by aerobic exercise it lowers the heart rate and bp at any level of sub maximal exercise and increases the threshold of lactic acid accumulation so as the threshold of lactic acid accumulation has increased so the lactic acid so it won't it cause it doesn't it won't cause fatigue so there is less chance of fatigue as the lactic acid accumulation is increased so then there is it causes a lower resting systolic and diastolic bp with people with high bp so aerobic exercise is uh, has to be recommended for people with high bp and it increases hdl cholesterol it decreases blood triglycerides and it decreases the body fat and improved weight control uh, improved weight control so decreases the body fat aerobic exercise can decrease the body fat and increase the weight control and it improves the glucose tolerance and decrease the insulin resistance another term usually comes uh, while we go through the Uh, exercise physiology books or exercise physiology is the vo2 max vo2 max is the cardiac output into arterio venous uh, difference now the importance of vo2 max 
VO2 max is an index for the maximal cardiac, cardiovascular and pulmonary function. It is the single most, single most useful measure, measurement to characterize the functional capacity of the oxygen transport system and say limiting factor in endurance performance. Now, which are the factors which determine VO2 max? There are some peripheral factors and central factors are there. Peripheral factors include muscle blood flow, capillary density, oxygen diffusion, oxygen extraction, hemoglobin oxygen affinity and muscle fiber profiles. These are the peripheral factors which determines the VO2 max. There are some central factors like cardiac output, arterial pressure, hemoglobin, ventilation, oxygen diffusion and uh, uh, alveolar ventilation perfusion ratio. These are the some central factors which determines the VO2 max. Now, which are, there are some factors which affecting the VO2 max. It includes the gender, gen uh, genetics, body composition, muscle mass, age, any pathologies, any diseases. There are some extrinsic factors also like activity level, activity level of the person and time of the day of activity, whether it is the morning, whether it is the evening, whether it is the night. Next is sleep deprivation, dietary intake also affects the VO2 max, nutritional status of the person and environment also affect the VO2 max. Once we see age, as the age increases, VO2 max keeps on decreasing in a same manner even in athlete, even in sedentary population, even in moderately active population. As the age increases, the VO2 max keeps on decreasing. And once we see the gender, males is having VO2 max more, but still as the age increases, VO2 max keeps on decreasing, women is having less VO2 max. Now, in case of, in, in case of uh, any injury, there may be chance of bed rest and bed rest also affect the VO2 max. As the bed rest, the days of the bed rest increases, VO2 max keeps on decreasing. Next uh, common term usually comes is uh, during ex in exercise physiology is the respiratory exchange ratio. Respiratory exchange ratio is the ratio between the carbon dioxide expired divided by the oxygen consumed. It is measured by gas exchanged at the mouth that is ratio of a carbon dioxide expired and oxygen consumed. Respiratory quotient is means that it is the ratio of carbon dioxide produced by the cellular metabolism to oxygen used by the tissues. So, it is the measurement are made at the cellular level. Next is regarding the skeletal muscle fiber type. Usually, we already discussed that regarding the structure of the muscle, there are usually two different types of muscle fibers are present in the body. These are the skeletal muscle fibers are present in the body. These are fast twitch muscle and slow twitch muscle. Slow twitch muscles are also called type 1 muscles and fast twitch muscles are called type 2 muscles. Again, fast twitch muscles are two different types type 2A and type 2B. So, all these muscles are having different regarding aerobic capacity. For example, type 1A is having a high aerobic capacity. At the same time, the myoglobin content also more in type 1A and the color of type 1A and type 2A is red, but type 2B is white. So, this is white muscle and color, the red is uh, the type 1A and type 2A are red in color. Now, the fatigue resistance is high in type 1A and it is low in type 2B. Then glycolytic capacity is and glycogen content is low in type 1A, it is high in type 2B. And triglyceride content is high in type 1A and low in type 2B. And myosin heavy chain is there is difference in the myosin heavy chain also in all these type of muscles. So, oh, this there are three types of di three different types of muscle fiber we can broadly classify into it as slow twitch and fast twitch muscle fibers. 
slow twitch muscle fibers are type 1A fibers. Fast twitch are two types again, type 2A and type 2B. Now, we used to hear the term, another term we used to hear in exercise physiology is the conditioning. Conditioning means it is the augmentation of energy capacity of the muscle by means of exercise program. It is nothing but we are training the papers and or we are training the muscles by using different types of exercise program. This is called conditioning. Now, there are different principles of conditioning. For example, these are there are around lots of principles regarding conditioning. Some principles are the specificity principle, adaptation principle, overload principle, reversibility or detraining principle. Specific that is once we are giving conditioning, it may be a strengthening exercise, it may be a flexibility exercise, it may be a mobility exercise, it may be a stretching techniques, it may be any other exercise. We can incorporate n number of exercises, different types of exercises, what we need exactly depends upon what, what type of conditioning we need. So, conditioning means it is the augmentation of energy capacity of the muscles by means of exercise. Now, the principles are the specificity principle, adaptation principle, overload principle, reversibility or detraining principle. Specificity principle means if you if you are giving a training, if you are giving a conditioning program, it should be specific. Then only, for example, a mobility exercise cannot give you a strength. A strengthening exercise cannot give you mobility. So that is called specificity exercise. For example, if you want to do, if you need range to improve the range of motion, you have to go specifically the range of motion exercise. If you need the flexibility of the muscle, a strengthening program cannot help you to improve the flexibility of the muscle. It, you have to go for stretching or the exercise which is specific to the flexibility to improve the flexibility. And uh, for example, if you are going to give, if you want to improve your strength, if you want to improve the strength of a muscle, you have to specifically, you have to go for the strengthening program. There is no other way, there is the, a stretching does not improve your strength. So, this is known as specificity principle. Second principle is the adaptation principle. Whenever you are giving a stimulus, it get there will be adapted to changes will be there. This is called adaptation principle. Now, overload principle. Once you are giving a load, <coughs> there will be adaptation, there will be changes, there will be response. According to the response, there will be changes. And if you are keeping the same adapt, same stimulus for a long duration of time, <coughs> there won't be much changes. In order to get more changes, you have to overload. For example, if you are giving a strengthening exercise, strengthening with 2 kilo of weight and if you are, there will be a response from the, there will be a changes or adaptation from the uh, muscles. Now, if you are giving the same 2 degree, uh, 2 kilo, there won't be, again there won't be more, there won't be more changes. So, in order to improve your, in order to improve more, in order to increase more strength, you have to increase the weight, you have to overload, then only there will be change. This is called overload principle. Now, reversibility or detraining principle. For example, if you are training for a long du duration of time and, <coughs> the, and if you are stopping your training, there is chance of deconditioning or detraining or reverse. This is called reversibility. So, this reversibility has to be avoided the proper training program. Now, for example, if you are training for a long period of time <coughs> and you are taken a rest, you got an injury or you are in prolonged bed rest. So, whatever the training we have done, its effect will go off. So, once if there is a prolonged bed rest, all the effect of training will go off. This condition is called deconditioning. So, there will be decrease in the muscle mass, there will be decrease in the strength, there will be decrease in the cardiovascular function, there will be decrease in the total blood volume, there will be decrease in the plasma volume, there will be decrease in the heart volume, there will be decrease in the orthostatic tolerance, there will be decrease in the exercise tolerance and there will be a decrease in the bone mineral density. So, whenever you are doing, if you are doing a prolonged bed rest, so this all the activity, all the all the effects which you have done by the conditioning will go off 
and this condition and this uh, this condition is known as deconditioning next term we used to discuss in exercise physiology is the endurance endurance can be defined as ability for a pro ability to work for a prolonged period of time or we can define it as ability to resist fatigue now once we are endurance in common term we we call is endurance as stamina that is there are two types of endurance are the the first one is muscular endurance second one is cardiovascular endurance so once we are uh, once if your muscle can work for a prolonged period of time it's called muscular endurance and your if your cardiovascular system can do a pro work effectively for a prolonged period of time during the aerobic exercise or during jogging running etc this is called cardiovascular endurance so muscular endurance means it is the ability of an isolated muscle group to perform repeated contraction over a period of time so endurance there are two types of endurance endurance is the ability to work for a prolonged period of time and ability to resist to fatigue there are two types of endurance are the muscular endurance and cardiovascular endurance usually once you are doing a prolonged period of running a prolonged running especially distance running for example marathon or road running whatever when the athlete become tired he become out of breath he suddenly find a strength and press upon its top performance with less ex exertion this is known as second wind that is it is a phenomenon in distant running where the athlete who is too out of breath and tired to continue continue suddenly find a strength and to press and goes its, its top performance with less exertion this is known as second wind some researchers are saying that it's only it is purely psychological but some researchers are saying that second wind is the is the result of body find body finding the proper balance of oxygen to counterbalance building up of lactic acid in the muscle other researchers are claiming that the second wind are due to endorphin uh, endorphin production so anyway the second wind is <clears throat> the person suddenly find a strength and reaches his top performance once he is is out of breath this is called a second wind and most some researchers still doubting that it's not that there is no physiological changes it's only psychological changes and and some scientists are saying that there is body find out a, a proper balance with oxygen to counterbalance and the build up of that is lactic acid which is the fatigue producing factor and others claim that second wind is due to endorphin production endorphin production so we we have uh, we already discussed through the uh, we have already discussed some basic terms some basic terminologies which come across once you read once you go through different exercise physiology books so in this session we discussed about the energy systems of the body what is lactate threshold what is oxygen deficit and debt what you understand by aerobic exercise which is the, that is aerobic exercise is for a long duration exercise with usage of oxygen and its benefits of aerobic exercise then we discussed about the vo2 max what is vo2 max which are the factors which affecting vo2 max what and we discussed about the different muscle fiber types what is conditioning what are the principles of conditioning and <coughs> what is what do you understand by deconditioning and what is second wind thank you in this session we'll be discussing about the energy systems of the body before we start the energy system the more one of the most common law of thermodynamics that is law of conservation energy all of us know that 
law of conservation energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. Now all energies, all energy of the muscle is provided to, of the energy is provided to the muscles in the form of ATP. So chemical reactions in the body causes ATP to break down and release energy to the muscles for work. So energy to the muscles are provided in the form of ATP. Then ATP goes, it breakdowns and causes the release of energy for work. ATP is a molecule which contain, it is also called, it is the full uh, terminology is, it is adenosine triphosphate. By the name itself, it contain, uh, we can understand that it contain a molecule of adenosine and three phosphate molecules. ATP consists of adenosine. It is a composed of again adenosine composed of an adenine ring and ribose sugar and three phosphate groups. So that is called ad an adenine ring and ribose sugar forming an adenosine and three phosphate molecules forming triphosphate and it is known as adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Now ATP is that uh, it is the form of energy which is given to the muscles and it is the energy for the muscle contraction. And it is the energy for the movement of the muscle, uh, it is uh, all the, all the uh, movements, all the energy for the muscles and move muscles, for the movement of the muscles is, uh, is in the as a molecule like uh, called ATP and how, uh, to, uh, how body uses that stored ATP. Now ATP, well, it is, I told you there is an adenosine, uh, adenosine molecule and three phosphate molecule. In order to release energy, ATP has to be broken down. ATP has to be broken down to ADP and phosphate molecule that is adenosine diphosphate and a phosphate molecule that is ATP a breakdown into ADP and P that is phosphate or phosphate molecule. And the energy released, the energy is released allows for this energy released will allow for muscle contraction. Now how this ATP, that is once the ATP is used, the, uh, the amount of energy ATP will get depleted or the stored energy the lab, it is, the, that there should be resynthesis of ATP. So in order, for, in order to resynthesis ATP, there should be some fuel. So fuel and uh, it's, uh, the fuel is from carbohydrates, fats, proteins and creatinine phosphate, these fuels resynthesize ATP, resynthesize ADP back to ATP. These fuel source, uh, sources resynthesize free phosphate molecule back to ATP. So free uh, uh, phosphate molecule and ADP joins together and forms the A ATP. Now resynthesis of ADP back to ATP, that is first of all uh, adenosine ADP with the help of it, or we already discussed how it is getting resynthesized. That is, ADP is with the help of carbohydrates, fats, proteins, or creatinine phosphate. ADP attached with the phosphate molecule and gets the ATP. Now, once we are doing movements, there are different ways we does the movement. We may do the movement in a quick, powerful way. Or we may do in a grace, the movement in a grace coordinated way. And the movement may be a movement sustained for many hours. Now, and everything is depends upon the capacity to produce energy. So there may be the person, maybe even in sports also, there may be, once we correlate with this movement with the sports also, there will be quick and powerful movement. There will be coordinated graceful movement. There will maybe sustained movement for many hours. So three ways human moves. Now quick movements which last for a few seconds. There will be, uh, there will be movements with coordinated reduced speed movement which last for a few minutes or several minutes. And there will be a reduced intensity movements which last for several hours. For each activity the body uses different types of energy systems. Now, all this activity, if it is a 
uh, first activity or if it is a coordinated with slow speech movement or if it is a coordinate if it is a long lasting movement all for all these movements energy is required and it is supplied by some energy systems of the body now energy systems of the body there are three types of energy systems this already we discussed once we discussed the introduction once we discussing the once we were in uh, doing the introduction so there are three types of energy systems are commonly seen in the body these are we can broadly classified into as two first of all aerobic system and anaerobic system then anaerobic system is again two types of system an immediate system and a short term system now the a, a immediate system is also called atp pcr system or atp creatinine phosphate system it is the immediate system it is also called a lactic system main, mainly because the lactic acid won't be produced at this type of anaerobic activity and it is also called creatinine phosphate system or phosphogen system so it is the immediate system which lasts for few seconds 2 to 3 seconds for an abrupt speedy activity so the first system is the atp pcr system or atp creatinine phosphate system it is the fastest system second system comes into action is the lactic acid system it is also called it is anaerobic system it's anaerobic again it's also called anaerobic glycolysis system that is here any glycolysis occurs but it is not aerobic it is anaerobic glycolysis as there is anaerobic glycolysis occurs there is production of a by product called lactic acid and this accumulate this may get accumulated so lactic acid accumulation may cause fatigue of the body so this lactic acid has to be removed properly otherwise the body the person the body may get fatigued so because of the production of lactic acid as by products the system is also called lactic acid system and the third system is the aerobic system it is the aerobic glycolysis here we use as oxygen so this is this is by the glycolysis which is exactly aerobic there won't be any there won't be production of lactic acid in this system also so we can divide broadly class we can divide the all the you know, energy system into three that is atp pcr system lactic acid system and aerobic system now all in all these systems the type of energy you used will be atp the type of energy used uh, and interplay between them depends upon the frequency duration and intensity of the activity and fitness level of the individual and atp uses in all these energy system now once we see the three systems for the activity which is lasting for 2 to 3 seconds even maximum up to 10 seconds the atp pcr system or immediate system will be used it is for short bouts of activity so the first Uh, the first 2 to 3 to seconds or even up to the 10 seconds even the atp pcr system will be used so now after that up to 40 seconds the lactic acid system works that is lactic acid there is production of lactate will be there and after the 40 seconds then for a aer an aerobic system comes into play now we'll go through what is atp pcr system so it's a combination of atp and creatinine phosphate makes up this system now we already discussed breakdown of atp breakdown into adp and uh, phosphate for the release of energy now atp once we uses the atp there is depletion of the atp so this has to be resynthesized so atp uh, adp it, uh, atp is converted into uh, adp and Uh, phosphate and the there will be release of energy now adp and phosphate must be reformed that is must be rebound to form the atp for a continuous muscle action now the fuel for this is creatinine phosphate so phos creatinine phosphate produce provide the energy for free phosphate to be reattached with the adp molecule to form the atp so this is that is why this is called creatine for atp creatine phosphate system here the creatine phosphate is the mediator or we can say it is the energy to recreate or to uh, remake the atp 
uh, for the for the for the uh, energy. So this system provides most of the ATP during the powerful or explosive effort. However, however, the total amount, amount of uh, this creatinine phosphate stored in the human body is extremely it is very limited. So altogether around for uh, um, that is the. The, the total amount of creatinine phosphate stored in the human body is extremely limited. So, energy released from the breaking down of ATP also required to resynthesize the uh, creatinine phosphate. Nevertheless, this process will be carried out when the human body is in the recovery phase. And to complete the ATP PCR system, uh, the complete ATP PCR system can provide around 5.7 to 6.9 kilocalories of energy and which can maintain up to maximum up to 10 seconds of maximal effort. So, this much of energy will be used can, will be used of within before 10 seconds itself. So, ATP PCR system can provide a very less amount of energy, but it is a very fast. So, mainly the, the importance of ATP PCR system is the PCR system is the instant energy, instant source of energy and a fast energy to the body. The ATP PCR system does not require oxygen in the muscles for a proper functioning. Besides, it is required fuels that is ATP and creatinine phosphate which is already stored in the muscle cells. So, the chemical reaction involved when creatinine phosphate is broken down are fewer than the other two energy systems. Now, the ATP system particularly important for the high, high intensity, high speed activities, but it has to be completed in within very few seconds. For example, for an abrupt activity like starting or jumping or throwing or a fast weight lifting, this type of activity, the ATP PCR system will be used. So, within 10 seconds or with a, with a period of less than 10 seconds, the max of maximal effort, the phosphate system is completely depleted or largely depleted. The body again, anyway the body needs again uh, energy. The body has to reduce the activity, intensity of activity at this point. At this point, the next energy system has to work for that is the here the glycolytic that anaerobic glycolysis system or lactic acid system comes into action and takes over the dominant part of provider of ATP. So, up to this level we need the, we, we were using the ATP PCR system, but it will not the ATP and their ATP or their phosphate will get depleted. So, another system has to take over the take over the work and this is done by lactic acid system. So, once we see the ATP PCR system or ATP creatinine phosphate system which is highly used for high intensity jumping throwing activities and uses the storage of phosphocreatine or creatinine phosphate to remake ATP and creatinine phosphate instantly available but runs out quickly and only maximum up to 10 seconds usually it is 2 to 3 seconds and the if the activity lasts longer than 10 seconds. ATP must be remade by some other means and the mean is the lactic acid system or anaerobic glycolysis system. Now, the second system just after aerobic system, the immediate system or creatinine phosphate system is the anaerobic system. It is used for again for high intensity exercise near maximal effort. For example, if a person is running a 100 meter sprint or a 50 meter swim, this person, he uses the immediate system, then he uses the lactic acid system. Again, the lactic acid system, it is an aerobic system and the byproduct formed in this lactic acid system is the lactic acid. Now, this lactic acid is the byproduct of this lactic acid system, but the production of the lactic acid, accumulation of the lactic acid causes, the researchers are saying that accumulation of the lactic acid causes the uh, the causes fatigue. So, uh, lactic acid system causes fatigue also, but it provides the bulk energy for high intensity just below the maximal effort and also when there has been insufficient time to replenish the phosphocreatinine 
in repeated maximal effort. During 400 meters of sprint, the phosphocreatinine system allows an explosive start. However, an aer anaerobic glycolysis system dominates the most powerful race. Uh, dominates in during for, for example during a 400 meters of sprint phosphocreatinine system or uh, the immediate system allows him for an explosive start or a faster start but the anaerobic glycolytic system or lactic acid system dominate for the next uh, that is dominate the, the most of the races the lactic acid system break down glucose in the absence of oxygen because they, we know that it is an anaerobic system to produce the limited supply for a energy for the resynthesis of ATP. ATP will be resynthesized and uh, supplied as energy and the but this partial this partial because the breakdown is in the in the absence of oxygen this absence of if the a breakdown occurs in the absent of ox absence of oxygen, it causes the production of lactic acid and accumulation of lactic acid. Now, once the lactic acid is uh, accumulated in the muscle, the contraction of the muscle will get inhibited. Now, up to a level body can tolerate the level of uh, increasing level of acid until if the level is higher than that ability to remove the it is called lactate threshold when lactate uh, lactic acid levels are greater than its body's ability to remove so when the lactic athlete passes this th threshold they should slow down for example a trained athlete may not hit the threshold until near finish an unfit, for example, a runner, a, a runner who will not fit this threshold, who will not hit this threshold until he finishes his uh, finish, finishing point. But an unfit player, he may hit the threshold much earlier and he may get fatigued. So, a training, proper training is, um, is also important. So, athlete will slow down its activity once it reaches the lactate threshold because there will be chance of fatigue there will be fatigue because lactate accumulation inhibit the muscle contraction and the muscle get fatigued. So, we already discussed the regarding the lactic acid system body uses stored fuel glycogen to remake that is, but it is in the abs absence of oxygen uh, and, uh, and it causes. Uh, so, what is happening is that the, there will be byproducts called lactate and hydrogen ion also released and it inhibit the muscle contraction. So, if the work is more than that, more than that, it, there may be production of lactic acid and it may cause per, produce uh, fatigue. So, the body has to switch into another system where the lactate is not produced and the system is called aerobic system. Aerobic system is used for the activities that is more that require a more sustained and plentiful supply of energy. This system uses carbon, uh, carbohydrate, uh, fats and proteins, sometimes protein in the presence of oxygen. This produces large amount of energy for ATP resynthesis. So, this food products especially the carbohydrate foods, especially the carbohydrates, fats and uh, sometimes uh, proteins combine and uh, combine with oxygen um, uh, and uh, produces energy and by products of carbon dioxide and water which can easily be removed. So, it is a very sufficient system because there is no production of lactate and the by products are the by products of this, uh, this system is carbon dioxide and water this can be easily removed. So, it is a one of the most efficient system. So, during rest fats are the primary fuel during uh, and during exercise carbohydrates are the primary fuel depends upon duration and intensity of exercise. For example, submaximal activities of low intensity uh, where energy demands are very low. For example, a lawn ball, slow walking, fats provide the major fuel, but submaximal or maximal activity with higher intensity for example, running, swimming, intense team sports etcetera 
carbohydrates are major fuel so the fuel is different in the aerobic system we'll go through the go back to the aerobic system again it is the system where we uses the we uses oxygen that is um, that is uh, aerobic glycolysis occurs and the one the by product is usually oxygen carbon dioxide and water so this can be not like lactox act, uh, lact, uh, lactate or this can be easily removed carbon dioxide and water can be easily removed from the body so it is a one of the most efficient energy system and the the uh, the energy used the energy used for this uh, the in this system is depends upon the fuel used for this system is usually carbohydrates and uh, fa fats and sometimes proteins and depends upon the activity intensity of activity and duration of the activity it depends on for example the which fuel is used varies if it is a sub maximal activities like slow ball slow ball or uh, low, uh, if if uh, if it is a sub maximal activity like slow walking or a lawn ball etc in this case the the energy used will be fat fat is the major fuel uh, source but in the active in the activity like sub maximal uh, maximal or sub maximal activity of high intensity like running swimming or intense team sports carbohydrates are the major fuels as it's one of the most efficient system but there is some demerits the main demerit of this system is it produces energy very slowly it's a much slower energy production than an aerobic system and once we once the person starts in any in aerobics once the person st starts usage of aerobic system after 2 to 3 5 uh, 2 to 5 minutes he the individual reaches a limit called a stage called a steady state this is when the respiratory system increased oxygen intake meet the activity of oxygen demands so oxygen oxygen intake will be will meet it reaches in an equilibrium with the oxygen demands and aerobic production of atp and then plateaus with the required play rate and this uh, this is this position is called steady state and it is a, it is a, we can understand by it is a state where st when the breathing become steady so this point is called steady state if a person who can reach the steady rate fast steady state fast so he can he can uh, he will be using a less amount of anaerobic system so he won't get fatigued fast so once we see aerobic system it is used in longer sub maximal activities like swimming running jogging cycling etc and there are plenty of oxygen is available to for the production of atp and so and the carbon dioxide is all carbon by products like carbon dioxide and water will be removed so there won't be any accumulation so it does not even the accumulate there won't be any accumulation of lactic acid so so this is considered as one of the most efficient system now there is another term called oxygen deficit oxygen deficit is i told you that there will be a steady state of oxygen consumption will be there now this steady state of oxygen consumption reaches after 2 to 5 seconds up to this point uh, up to this steady state of oxygen up to this steady state anaerobic system will be also will be used so oxygen deficit can be defined as it it is the repres it represents the difference between the total oxygen actually consumed during exercise an amount that would have been consumed had a steady rate of aerobic metabolism occurred immediately when the exercise begins usually the steady rate of oxygen uh, consumption or steady rate of oxygen uh, or steady rate of aerobic metabolism starts after 2 to 5 minutes of exercise so it is the state so up to this steady state of state level the oxygen consumed the ox the the energy consumed or the the uh, the energy system used is the anaerobic system so once the steady state reaches the ox uh, the the system used will be a aerobic system so this oxygen deficit is the 
uh, is the actual measure of how much anaerobic energy used by the system. So, this is called oxygen deficit. Now, what will be the oxygen deficit? The, the, what will be the difference in oxygen deficit in trained and untrained athlete? Usually, the person, uh, st the steady uh, rate will be similar value. The similar values of steady rate oxygen uptake will be there. But a trained person who is training regularly reaches the steady rate faster than a person with less trained. That is, trained person reaches the steady rate faster than an untrained person. So, he will be having less oxygen deficit. So, that is means that he uses the anaerobic system less and uses aerobic system more. So, great total of oxygen consumed, there will be more oxygen consumed and less anaerobic system energy transfer in trained athlete. So, in that is why trained athlete he uses less anaerobic system. So, less accumulation of lactic acid and less fatigue will be there in case of a trained athlete. And this adaptation trigger an earlier aerobic ATP production with lactate formation in trained individual. So, but in case of an untrained person, this, uh, this uh, oxygen that is uh, oxygen deficit will be more. He reaches the steady state of oxygen, uh, the steady state bit slowly or bit later. So, it causes more usage of anaerobic system especially the lactic acid system which causes the accumulation of the lactic acid which and this causes a fatigue. So, lactate form a, so that is the difference between the oxygen deficit, oxygen deficit of a untrained individual will be more and oxygen deficit of a trained individual will be less. Now, another term usually can see, usually discuss once we discuss the energy system is the oxygen depth. Oxygen depth is the oxygen taken used after a vigorous exercise. That is in the additional oxygen that must be taken into the body after vigorous exercise to restore all the system to their normal state is called oxygen depth. That is the oxygen uh, used after the oxy extra oxygen used after a vigorous exercise is called and oxygen depth. Now, what are the causes for excess post exercise, uh, post exercise oxygen consumption after an AV exercise? The first thing is that we we use the ATP for the production of oxygen for the production of for the uh, energy. Now, this ATP has to be resynthesized, and we used the creatinine phosphate in the immediate system. This uh, creatinine phosphate also has to be resynthesized for so this oxygen will be used for especially this resynthesis. Now, the resynthesis of blood lactate to glycogen so has to be done through the name of the cycle is called Cori cycle. So, we use uh, oxygen will be used for this purpose also. There is oxidation of blood lactate in the energy metabolism, then there should be restoration of oxygen in the blood tissue fluid and myoglobin. So, this for this purpose also uh, oxygen will be used after exercise. Thermogenic effect of elevated core temperature and there will thermogenic effects of hormones like catecholamine, epinephrine and norepinephrine and there will be increased in uh, pulmonary and circulatory dynamics and other elevated levels of physiological function. So, these are the causes for the uh, excess or excess post exercise oxygen consumption after heavy exercise. So, in this session we discussed about the energy systems, we discussed about the three different types of energy system and we ATP is the, it is the energy for the muscles, ATP which contain adenosine and adenosine which contain adenine ring and ribose sugar and a triphosphate and triphosphate that is 3 phosphate molecule and this energy will be used for muscle contraction and activities. So, this energy has to be restored for the in the energy system. So, for this purpose for 3 energy systems are available. These are we already discussed 
that is this uh, ATP PCR system this is also called immediate system where lactic acid won't be produced at this system and this is called immediate system it is last for 2 to 3 seconds it's last for 2 to 3 seconds and maximum up to 10 seconds this system is called ATP PCR system here creatinine phosphate is the to uh, to change the to uh, re remake the ATP but see it uh, deplete the creatinine phosphate deplete fast so the the system has to be replaced by the second system that is lactic acid system comes into action that is lactic acid system it works till 30 to 40 seconds so but the one demerit of this system again it's an, an aerobic system and one demerit of this system is the production of the lactate which is which causes the lactate causes inhibition of the muscle activity and it causes fatigue so there will be production of the lactic uh, in the in the lactic acid system there is production there will be production of the lactic acid so this is the negative thing in the lactic acid system after this 30 to 40 seconds the aerobic system one of the most effective system comes into action but it produces energy slowly when compared to other system but the main merits of this system is regarding its byproduct if the byproduct is not lactic acid here aerobic glycolysis the lact the byproduct is the oxygen and water which has to which can be removed very fastly so it does not affect the this lactic acid system uh, does not this aerobic system does not cause fatigue so there are three these are the three different types of systems used uh, by the three types of energy system used by the body